our next topic is they're still kneeling, Eric. They are still kneeling in England. They announced in the English Premier League, which is arguably the biggest soccer league in the world. You know, there's Spanish, Italian, German, but the Premier League is, you know, English speaking. So we tend to focus on that in the Western world. No, you're not a soccer fan, but they have decided they're going to keep taking the knee um, for specific games, anti-racism games. And I, th- and I think they got booed as well. You know, um, some stadiums who are less f- uh, forgiving, like in the Manchesters and in the London teams, where when you're going further north or west from those cities and people don't give a shit about what your, your social justice cause is, they're booing them. So they're saying they're taking the knee before select mass uh, matches. Two will coincide with no room for racism campaigns in October and April, 2024. There have been people who have said they, they won't kneel, but they'll also take the knee ahead of their first and last games of the season, as well as before matches played on boxing day for some reason, which is really just a holiday in British countries like mine, where things are cheaper because the day after Christmas, so there have been players who don't take the knee, specifically an African guy um, and then a British black guy. They say they don't take it because it doesn't do anything. It doesn't mean anything to them and because they don't like BLM. And here is something I thought was interesting because this is from Sports Illustrated and they've had transgender swimsuit models. The gesture has been used as an anti-racism symbol since the murder of George Floyd. And it's like you can tell through the ra- the, the writing it is synonymous with the Black Lives Matter movement, it says. A statement published this week on behalf of 20 captains of the team say they were unified in our belief that discrimination has no place in football. I mean, it happens, Eric. We've seen it. We've covered it on this show where they had monkey chants for a guy and they made him cry. Um, it's happened in Brazil. They throw a banana at a player. Like, this stuff happens. My question is, Eric, why do you need to co-opt an American thing, George Floyd, Summer of Love, BLM, f- embezzling a bunch of money, uh, lesbian leaders buying a bunch of houses. Why do you need to co-opt a thing that's so abstract in England has nothing to do with anything that's happened there, nothing to do with anyone in their society. They don't have cops killing people for better or for worse in the UK accident, not by accident. They don't, they don't even carry around guns, Eric. Why do they need to co-opt George Floyd stuff when we've seen that they actually have real, and I'm saying real in both quotes and non quotes, racist things happen on their side of the pond, why do they need to borrow stuff from the U.S.? Um, well, <laughs> again, you can't. You could pose that question under the assumption that it's genuine. It's all completely fake. Look, it's completely across on the other side of the world, right? I would have a hard enough time understanding why a bunch of kids in New York City. Or what? Are, what are you doing? Why are you? <laughs> why are you? highlighting this showing one. a quote anyways keep talking <laughs> well it distracted me i'm like what I'm, um i would have a hard enough time in new york city are protesting for a guy that you know met his demise in police custody in a state that most of them had probably never even been to so to take it a, completely across the world makes even less sense and with all that said how did I mean, how did the kneeling even become associated with BLM? Because if I'm not mistaken, the kneeling would have been Colin Kaepernick nearly a decade ago, right? Like it would have been Colin Kaepernick, you know, well before George Floyd. When he, what was he? I don't even remember what he was mad about. But the kneeling thing, like he was the one that put that on the map. Am I mistaken about that? It wasn't even. It wasn't. There was nobody even knew the word. The, the name George Floyd had that. I don't. I genuinely don't even remember why he was mad. <laughs> no, I don't remember. I think the kneeling was from Kaepernick. You're right. He was kneeling because he didn't want to stand for the national anthem because uh, oppression, police. He never actually explained it. He just said he can't stand for a flag where uh, people in in police departments treat black people this way. Never actually but explained it. That was well can, before George Floyd, obviously. Yes, right? people can try to pretend like he had a point. He never explained an actual point other than like vague explanations of oppression. And then I think you're taking that because you're ashamed of your country and you're adding the black fist is the other thing. I don't think the players are doing that. There have been some players I in my research, there were some players raising the fist, but we're combining hating America with black power and for some reason people don't see that and you combine that with a crooked organization that that misappropriated 
hundreds of millions of dollars started by women who don't want families to exist. Um, well, at least not the nuclear family. And you've got people in England for some reason saying, this is something I want to support. I don't think they understand it per se. I think this is just like you said, virtue signaling for the point of virtue signaling. And you've got a bunch of British soccer players. Being, hey, of course I'm against racism, George Floyd and uh, terrible things that have happened. There's no nuance and everything. It's like, if you were to, to say that you're speaking out against some, uh, you know, one of the, the, the bridge killing or something and, and making it see an anti terror I don't know. Take an example of something stupid from England that they stand for and completely misunderstand it and then make your entire billion dollar industry uh, make a gesture. Whether in here it'd be like sitting backwards on a chair, <laughs> sitting backwards on a chair for racial equality in Northern Ireland, Eric. I don't know. Yeah, it's all yeah, stupid. Yeah. So, but can't you, can we at least agree that the, Lack of the lack of reason from Colin Kaepernick is what allows it to now, according to this news site, be synonymous with BLM because we for many years it was just Colin Kaepernick, but without an actual purpose for it, they can just change it. So it's like, dude, it doesn't it doesn't mean anything ever. It's all completely fake and phony, and it's just um, I th- I do think on the plus side that more people can see through it than ever. And I should have would like to tie this in. I don't know if you have the link, but to that Vlad TV post that I sent you about Benny the Butcher. I don't know if you ever heard of Benny the Butcher. You listen to his music. Um, yeah, and there, the point I'm making is more and more people can see through this. So Vlad TV, who is an establishment puppet, right, posts that Benny the Butcher faces backlash for a voice and support for Donald Trump. And you can go, at last I checked, it was like more than six, you know, 600, most of which are like, yeah, me too. Like, it, so, <laughs> so where's the backlash, bro? There, there is no backlash. It's Vlad TV doing the bidding of the establishment in an attempt to make people still in 2023, still think that beat boop, orange man bad. And to, to connect this all is, as these players are taking a knee and, and it may be Colin Kaepernick, it may be BLM or whatever it is, people can see through it. It's the media is just force feeding, bro. Like they're just they're jamming it down your throat and most <laughs> people can 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 see right through it. So they're 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 kind of panicking and they have a lot of, you know, I can't, you know, we're still building the platform, but there are millions of podcasts out there who are probably going to dwarf CNN in a ma- in a matter of months, right? Like a guy like Mark Dice, even, who is rivaling CNN from, as he would say, a laptop in his kitchen, right? So people people are getting hip to this, and um, you know, I see it even in the small sample size of people that I talk to. Like back in you know Arizona is a little bit more quote unquote conservative, but that only proves the point more because somehow. Katie Hobbs was popular. <laughs> Again, you could drive you could drive any direction for an hour or two in the Phoenix metro area, and you might see one person if you get out of the car with maybe a Katie Hobbs tote bag. You're gonna see Carrie Lake. You're gonna see Trump. You're gonna see FJB. You're gonna see you know guns, beer, Trump, or whatever it is. But you're not gonna see anybody. You might have you might see somebody with a mask, which is their flag, sort of. But the point is, even in that place that is is easily more quote unquote conservative than the state right next to it, California, they know, and they know that that Katie Hobbs won fair and square. Nothing fishy ever happened. It's true. Nothing fishy ever happens. Um, I think you're right. The the things that are purposely kept vague so they can perpetuate them from forever, like climate change is, you know, the yes. bread and butter. And it's what they should have been doing for a long time. Al Gore should have never made any claims for things that were going to come true. Um, you know, and Joe Biden should have never said that any jobs were coming back or he never should have said the border was, was good. Uh, they should make no claims. It would help them very much. Turn it up, Jordan.